So Matthew Vaughn's Argyle is a surprisingly subdued uh, Matthew Vaughn film, I guess. I, I don't know. After watching Matthew Vaughn's other, like, Kingsman movies, which were always... They were a little bit all over the place, but they were always, like, uproar, uproarious, and there was always, like, a few elements to to them where I, I genuinely laughed and smiled. They just, like... Uh, the the boldness of the absurdity that was going on within, you know, like, mocking, like, the, the spy genre of films with, like, within Kingsman. Um, so I was kind of looking forward to Argyle's, like, maybe maybe it's a different type of Matthew Vaughn that I'm seeing here in, in, in this type of film, but, but oddly enough, like, I mean, like, you look at, like, the central premise, it's about a... Uh, a writer who gets thrown, who writes about spies, and then gets thrown into a world of spies, very much romancing the stone type narrative. And I thought, okay, you know what? It's a standard type of, you know, like it, like I've seen this type of story before, but I'm sure like Matthew Vaughn could load it up with something, something unexpected, something fun, uh, and and something at least over the top, because he usually delivers on that type of stuff in his Kingsman movies. Not so much with Argyle. Um, maybe it's just like the the PG thirteen rating that he's trying to you know keep everything you know not as not as wild and crazy. Um, but it just feels like it's it's missing something. Like because there's elements on paper that are fun about it, but they don't pay off in a in like in an exciting way that you would hope for. Because, like, I, I like the central idea of the film. Um, uh, Bryce Dallas Howard plays Ellie Conway, a author of a series of spy novels in which she writes uh, Agent Argyle, which in her mind is played by Henry Cavill, who works alongside John Cena. Now, you've probably seen, like, because, like, Henry Cavill's been, like, front and center on, like, all the marketing for this. But, of course, like, the way that they've been trying to market this film is, like, a little bit of, like, a, um, a twisty... Uh, mystery where they're not quite sure who the real Argyle is because they established that, you know, Henry Cavill is meant to be an imaginary Argyle. So, like, the big mystery is who is Agent Argyle? And they do reveal it in the film, and I'm not going to reveal it here in case anyone does want to see it, but um, suffice to say, and this is a big problem throughout the film, like, it kind of wastes Henry Cavill and John Cena at the same time. Like, they're mostly just there for, like, the expected action tropes like they're there to like just kind of like occupy space and just kind of like look kind of you know strong and you know like like as a predictable type of like action film and not used for much else but th this becomes like a common thing throughout the film so ellie is used to writing about spies but she finds herself getting um, hung up on her latest novel and then she's thrown into the world of spies when she comes into contact with agent aiden who is played by sam rockwell and uh, I will say this, if if you've watched a lot of films with Sam Rockwell and you're expecting him to do, like, a lot of dancing, you will get that in this film. But uh, much like a lot of, like, the like the, the, the chases and the fight scenes, um, it kind of feels predictable in that sense. Because, like, every every time, like, Sam Rockwell shows up and he does, like, a little dance in his films, like, not, not a... <laughs> like it just like every now and then he just like shows up and does a little bit of a dance it's kind of fun but here there's several dances and he actually work tries to work the dance routine into his action sequences which is kind of fun like, like i said on paper this stuff sounds fun it sounds exciting and it, it sounds like the stuff that i'd like to see in a spy comedy um but it, it just like it it, it keeps the, the problem is, like, it, it feels like this film is just throwing stuff at the wall because it doesn't build on anything. It feels like it's just twists, you know, just to keep stuff, like, moving instead of, like, you know, building off stuff that came before and just throwing wild stunts and action scenes at the wall um, that don't really catch you off guard as much, despite, you know, like, the, the, the change in scenery, you know, the change in weapons, you know... Uh, which which are fine. Like uh, that's I I guess that's the way I describe most of the elements of this film. It's like they're they're okay, but they don't have that same punch that Matthew Vaughn's you know other films you know like kind of like 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 Kick Ass and Kingsman and X Men all have like those one those moments of like shock in there where like it, where I was expecting that like I was kind of just sitting there waiting for that moment to surprise like even. With all, like, the twists that Aiden reveals, like, with, with Sam Rock, Because, like, Sam Rockwell shows up kind of looking, like, 
the dude from the Big Lebowski and then uh, changes his form later. Um, and I expect, like, okay, that's kind of a funny bit. Maybe he could change disguises more throughout the film, and he doesn't really do that. Um, I, I kind of like the idea that Ellie has, like, the secret information that she doesn't realize is locked away in her mind that she can access about the spy world, which she kind of does for a few scenes, but then they forget about it and then find other stuff to do. And then they just kind of, like, fill in some of the blanks for, for comedy by throwing Ellie's cat into the mix, who you might have seen in the marketing for this film. The cat is along for the ride in this uh, in this Argyle-looking uh, backpack, which uh, I'll... You know, I, I won't spoil much of, like, the other big twist in the film because there's a ton, but I'll, I guess I'll spoil this for anyone who's wondering. No, they don't kill the cat. Um, the, the thing is, if they actually did kill the cat, it, it might be just a, a little bit exciting. Like, I'm not trying to, like, encourage it, but um, but it's, like, usually, like, usually, like, the, uh, a pet in that scenario would only be dead in, like, a horror film. And within, like, a spy comedy, you kind of expect them to... You, you, you kind of expect them to survive, like, especially a film that's trying to be, like, very, very silly and you want the characters to be likable. Um, so, so, yeah, like, the, the, the cat's just there for funny reaction shots, and don't worry, the, the cat doesn't die in this film. But getting back to what I was saying about uh, the, the cast being wasted here, because, like, you have a fairly stacked cast here. You have, you have Brian Cranston, who's playing this villain who, um... Uh, like, I, I was so mad about, like, how they used Brian Cranston in this film because they they put him in, like, this mode of, like, shifting between being this um, kind of, like, wholesome dad and a sinister villain. So, you know, you've got, like, the aspects of, like, Malcolm in the Middle and Breaking Bad. And I love the way he shifts between them, but it doesn't really feel like we get a lot of that with him. Like, we don't get a lot of scenes that go on long enough to have fun with Cranston that it mostly just feels like, it mostly just feels like he's a standard James Bond villain. Like, even with the twists and all. Um, Catherine O'Hara shows up as uh, Ellie's mother, and she has a big twist here, but she's it feels like she's only used for, like, one punchline of a gag. And, like, and it's kind of funny. I mean, they, they get, a like, a small amount of... They get a small amount of smiles out of me with it, but not a lot. Um, I mentioned, like, Henry Cavill and John Cena are fairly wasted because they're mostly just, like, imaginary characters. Um... Uh, Sophia Batella shows up to, like, say some really, like, stand... She occupies, like, one scene. Um, that, and the same goes for um, uh, Dua, uh, Dua Lipa and Ariana DeBose. Both of them pretty much just occupy one scene in the film. Um, where it feels like... And, and it's not like one of those, like, like a one-scene, like, cameo-type deal, kind of like bullet train. It's one of those things where it's like, they're supposed to be, like, central characters, and they're supposed to have a little bit of a twist to them... But they only kind of, they're only kind of there for like just a few minutes on screen. And then um, they're either forgotten about or they're kind of bookended for the rest of the film and not really used that much. And probably the the biggest waste in this film, I think, is Samuel L. Jackson. Like Samuel L. Jackson, they establish as this kind of like um, spy sage who who does have, like, information regarding Ellie and, like, you know, why this evil organization is after her for her secrets. And he spends most of the film, and I'm not exaggerating here, he spends the majority of the film just sitting back watching a Lakers game on television. That's that's the extent of it. Like, like he plays a key role in kind of, like, exposing this big spy organization that uh, Ellie finds herself trying to... Um, unearth and like unleash this info into the public and Samuel Jackson's character plays a part in that but he's really just sitting back and watching basketball for most of the film um, and it's just like it's, it's such a waste because the film starts off with like really good energy in the first act it's like okay it's like it's it's trying not everything is working here like Ellie's moments of like writer's block um, and her imaginary spy elements are decent and it's like okay you know they're, they're not great but i'm sure like as the film goes on it might build on this um and it really doesn't it just kind of just keeps throwing twist after tri uh, twist after twist at the screen um to the point where it's like it feels like they're trying for absurdity but like the the it's it's just not working and i think i think one scene that encapsulates it best is there's a scene where ellie is finally given like the the big reveal of who agent argyle really is and her reaction is just like just like anger and frustration which is kind of like she's like that's it 
that's the twist. And she's like, this is so stupid. And it's just like, it's one of those meta elements where they're kind of like commenting on how silly this is. Um, and all the other characters are just kind of just going with it. They're just kind of like, well, that's, hey, that that's the script we got, you know, just gotta roll with it, you know? Um, and I, I wish I could like this film more because like, like I said, the, the elements on paper here feel like they could work. Like, I mean, yeah, sure. The, the central story, basically romancing the stone, but you know, like uh, you could still make that a fun film if you find um, exciting um, and kind of funny stuff to do along the way. And Vaughn is certainly trying with this film, but the more it goes on, the more it just keeps on feeling like it's spinning its wheels, trying to throw everything at the screen that it can. And it's, it's just not sticking. It's like the few times that I did smile, it's kind of like a little bit off guard. And it's like a lot of stuff doesn't, pay off as well as it should here. I mean, it's like, this is a film that it's it, like, it's supposed to be absurd. And I'm kind of for it because like, this is a film where it has a scene where Bryce Dallas Howard is skating on oil and slicing up henchmen. Um, and just kind of like doing all these skater tricks, uh, all these like ice skating moves on oil while she's shooting up all the goons. And it's like, yeah, that's it's a funny idea on paper, but we, we there's not a lot that builds up to that moment. And the more that it just keeps going, it just feels like it's not going anywhere. And I think that the, the one scene that best describes just kind of like the, the the lacking momentum of the script is there's a scene where um uh where Sam Rockwell and Bryce Dallas Howard are both fighting goons while they're they're in gas masks and they're they're shooting at the they're they're shooting at all the bad guys. They're throwing all this colorful like all these colorful smoke bombs around them. Um, and there's this ridiculous romantic music playing. It's supposed to be very silly because they're doing dance moves while they're while they're killing all these people. But they're not moving that much. They're mostly just stuck in this one spot, just kind of like pulling off these silly moves and killing all the bad guys around them without really going anywhere they're just standing in place most of the time just kind of doing their own doing their own thing right in this little center here and not moving outside of it um because yeah like the whole thing just feels like a very restrictive matthew vaughn film um and it's impossible not to compare to his kingsman movies um not just because of like the the association of the genre but because this might be a bigger twist, but this film is meant to kind of, sort of tie into Kingsman in some weird way. I, I, but by the time it gets to that point in the film where it's like this big, like, you know, mid, mid credit reveal, I just kind of like, uh, okay, what, whatever, I, I guess. And then like the, the other ridiculous reveal about, um, the, the Argyle books and like a proposed series and like setting up a French, it, just, it, it feels like a mess by the end. Like they're just throwing out, it, every idea that they can at the screen seeing what sticks and with Argyle it mostly doesn't it's just like it's a it's a spy comedy that's so disappointing uh for all the lacking potential that it has